the odds are most of you have never seen a Gibson SG like this one. It's somewhat unusual. It's called a GT. Okay, so let's throw it on the bench and let's have a look. Did you know that there's only one decent review video of a Gibson SG GT guitar on the entire YouTube platform? And lucky for you, it happens to be the one you're watching right now. Which brings me to an old Chinese proverb that says, there's no such thing as a guitar quackery YouTube video that you would want to miss because they're all so damn good. So you should check out some of the other videos too. Uh, which brings me to the point, you should make sure you click like, share and subscribe so you don't miss other guitar quackery videos in the future. All right, so welcome to Guitar Quackery. Now let me take you to the shop and let's have a look at that damn guitar. The guitar looks pretty good. I uh, removed the back cover so we can have a closer look at the inside. It's an unusual SG guitar. Not very popular, but uh, I did some uh, research. It seems like now it it kind of became a desirable guitar for collectors. Uh, looks like this. The inlays are, well, uh, why don't I uh, show you a close up. So the inlays are mirrors. Okay. So I guess uh, this is uh, kind of to go with the theme here of, uh, you know, Chrome hardware. These are push-pull, I, I guess, coil splitting. It's got a three-way switch, just like any other SG, but uh, the output jack is here. Uh, we're gonna flip the guitar over, we're gonna look at it. Let me just give you a nice shot of the, yeah, going this way. We're gonna have a, a close look at the nut. Um, we see signs of aging here. I'm not a big fan of these uh, tuning machines, but this is what it is. All right, so now let's turn the guitar over. And why don't I show you this on the inside. So these are the coil splitting uh, push-pull pots. This wiring looks a little unusual for Gibson. Kind of like spaghetti wiring, but uh, I don't believe anything was modified on this guitar. Yeah. All right. Uh, these are Grovers. And here we can see the serial number. Okay. So. I'll turn it over. And we'll look at the specs. Uh, first. Well, I did perform a setup on this guitar. But I just want to show you where it's at. Um, we have these feeler gauges. Six one thousandths of an inch. Here we place straight edge on the base side, eighth fret over here. Six one thousandths. Passing. Okay, barely. So the next one is not going to pass, right? Six one thousandths. Okay, now let's move this to the other side. And let's use this same one. We can see here, six one thousand is passing. Next one gets stuck. All right. So uh, the fretboard is in fact symmetrical. We have a symmetrical fretboard. I did not find any 
uneven frets. I'll just go quickly over the fretboard. Just like that. Okay, I think you trust me. I did remove the trusset cover. It says GT on it. We're gonna have a closer look at the uh, truss rod because it's a, it's a somewhat unusual truss rod for a Gibson. Uh, maybe uh, maybe you've never seen this before, but this is uh, sometimes how it is on uh, Gibson guitars. All right. Let's have a look. Looks like this. You need an Allen key, right, to adjust it. So it's a one eighth of an inch Allen key. Now the particular Allen key that I'm using is actually a Fender Allen key. All right. Let me put this away. Let's have a look at the nut. First, I'll show you. Um, the height of the nut. Bear with me a moment here. Okay. Here we have uh, these uh, frets. So uh, as you know, I already tested the frets here. There are no uneven frets, which is important for this measurement. This is a metric dial indicator and we place it on top of the string and we are going to measure the gap that remains between the strings and the frets when I push the strings down against the second fret right here, okay? So here, starting from, from this string over here, very small gap, so this is perfect. On the B string, I, I push it down, I place this on top. Very small gap, yeah? The G string, somewhat bigger, right? So I could file this down. Here, same thing. I don't think this nut has been uh, modified. I think this is how it came from the factory. Um, so in my experience, uh, I guess it depends who at the factory works on the guitar. Um, Gibson guitars are not always consistent in the way they, uh, they cut the nuts. Okay. So here we're looking at the E string on the nut. Uh, as you can see, this nut's been cut, well, in this manner, right? So there's a, uh, you know, a, uh, well, whatever you call it, like a, there, there's no string slot going through the entire length of the nut, right? So we have uh, plenty of slack at the back end and only a small contact point at the front, okay? This is the original nut. You can see the finish going over the side of the nut. Now, uh, this string slot is the same way, right? Because of the shape of the nut. And same with the G string. Okay. Here we have the D. A and E string. Okay, so now I want to show you the uh, the binding because there's something happening with the binding. There we go. Okay, 
So we're looking at the fourth fret. And as you can see, we see the Gibson nibs, fret nibs. But uh, right here, we see a, a tiny fracture and a bump. Okay, so let's move over to this fret here. This is the third fret. Let me just refocus the image. We see the same exact situation, right? Same exact thing. And if we move over to the second fret, same thing. So uh, what is this crack? Well, uh, when the fretboard shrinks, um, it kind of shrinks in this direction, but the frets don't shrink. So then uh, the binding gets pushed out by the fret, okay? And in more severe cases, you can also see a little gap between the binding and the fretboard here. And here, as you can see, it started to crack open a little bit um, because of this uh, movement, okay? So this is not a very severe case of um, basically what is fret sprout. So if this guitar did not have binding, we would be seeing fret sprout at the side, uh, at the two sides of the neck, all right? I do want to show you that this is a Gibson scale length. Here we have a, a Music Nomad tri-beam. Uh, well, this one has a scale length measurements on the side. Um, we just place it here against the nut and then we take a measurement here. So why don't I bring my phone close so that you can see this. So as you can see on the 12th fret we see that it measures 24.563 right? That's the center of the fret, kind of, actually. I gotta move it a little bit this way. Okay. And that's when I keep uh, the tri-beam against the knot here. Okay, just like that. That's what we're saying. Now, um, is there anything else I'm forgetting? Maybe I can show you the pickup rings. I don't really want to do a, a full a review of this guitar. This is a, a used guitar. It's more like an overview. Um, so, you know, there's this chrome theme uh, going on here. Uh, kind of like, uh, it's not a neck through body, but, you know, it kind of looks like that. Uh, but as you can see, there's like a chrome theme and this is a, a non-conventional tailpiece. It's bolted with three bolts from the back. You put the strings through and go across the bridge. That's pretty much it. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. Oh yeah, I am. I almost forgot to show you this. So why don't I show you the output jack, okay? So, uh, yeah, this is not going to get accidentally unplugged during a performance, okay? This one came in a hard case. I'm not really sure how they were sold, but this one came in a hard case. Uh, sorry. 
almost lost my balance. Well, if you bought a Gibson SG GT guitar in 2006 or 2007, I got some good news for you. Those turned out to be good investments because the prices skyrocketed significantly. Now people are looking for them because only, uh, you know, a few were produced. And, you know, now people started noticing. So uh, that's that. Now, um, oh, look, I'm uh, drinking tea tonight as I'm editing because it, it's not too late just yet. Uh, but if you feel that you want to buy me a coffee uh, to keep me up at night editing more videos for YouTube, you know, just feel free to click the link that says buy me a coffee. And I, I will buy a coffee and I will be drinking it as I'm editing videos. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, other than that, you can also click the link that says uh, share. Okay. Uh, because that way you help the channel grow so more people watch these videos, viewing hours, right? And uh, what's that? So, what can I tell you? I'm making more videos. I think the next one will also be a Gibson video, which is why I'm wearing this t-shirt, which is a video I'm editing right now alongside this one that you're watching now but that's coming up so friends i'll see you soon